very good morning friends so the gate drive is also another important uh, power transmission drive where you want to transmit power from driving member to driven member as you know the power is produced for the prime movers we have so many types of prime movers like engine the power produced from the prime mover like a crankshaft of uh, ic engine must be transmitted to the location where it is used to transmit this uh, power we have different types of power transmission devices right so simply the power transmission is the transfer of energy from its place of generation to a location where it is applied to perform useful work right so the power produced from various devices must be transmitted or transferred to certain location where it is required to convert into useful work right so this power transmission normally accomplished by different uh, types of uh, mechanical elements uh, like uh, bell drives rope drives chain drives and we have other types of uh, power transmission systems like uh, couplings joints and so on right even uh, friction clutches apart from this we have gate drive is also one of the important power transmission drive where you can use uh this power transmission drive to transmit power from input shaft to on to output shaft uh, when the distance between the shafts is uh, very much less when the shafts are very much closer to each other then you can transmit the power by means of uh, this gate drives okay so out of all these support transmission drives the gates are capable of transmitting force from a uh, force or motion without any slip and therefore are the most durable and rugged of all mechanical devices so here the power transmission as you know the efficiency is more important the positive drive requirement is one of the important parameter you need to consider when you transmit the power from one location to another location so the drive which gives without any power loss during its transmission is called positive drive by right? the drive which gives a constant velocity ratio without any loss or without any reduction is called positive drive so one of the drive which gives this positive drive is gate drive so because the gate drive will not allow any type of slip that's why it gives 100% positive drive requirements right so when you compare with other types of power transmission drives and this gate drives are most uh, durable and rugged so that means the uh, rigid in its uh, construction uh, come when you compare with other types of uh, mechanical elements used for the power transmission if you look at this uh, figure so here this is the prime mover where the power is produced or the energy source is the diesel engine from there the driving shaft of uh, the diesel engine or the crank shaft is not a driving shaft this is connected to output device required so let us take it becomes a generator as the power requiring device the crank shaft of ic engine is connected to the generator shaft by means of this power transmission drive so this power transmission drive is nothing but gate drive or some other drives but when the shafts are very much closer then you can use a gate drive as a best choice for the power transmission right as it gives a positive drive okay so that's how the power is transmitted the most important feature of gate is that it produces a, a mechanical advantage which is the measure of force amplification right so that means it uh, follows the lever's law even with the application of small amount of force right? it can produce higher output right? so that means it uh, increases the uh, the power amplification or uh, the force amplification that is said to be mechanical advantage right the gate drive gives higher velocity output or any power transmission uh, uh, device uh, gives higher velocity output or higher torque or force output uh, but uh, the combination of uh, 
both the velocity and force output cannot be attained with this uh, power transmission devices right so analysis of uh, gear drive you can uh, consider the analysis of two friction disc right so if you consider two cylinders right in contact with each other on its uh, circumferential contact then if you rotate one of the cylinder obviously the other cylinder also takes a rotation right if the contact between these two cylinders uh, is uh, provided with certain amount of friction right if both the cylindrical surfaces are highly polished ones even uh, the rotation of one cylinder cannot carry another cylinder if the surfaces are highly polished if the surfaces are uh, somewhat rough in nature obviously the rotation of one cylinder carries the other cylinder that means the rotation of one cylinder causes the rotation of other cylinders in opposite sense when the contact between the two cylinders is external right so that means the frictional characteristics between the uh, surfaces of uh, both the cylinders at the contact drives this uh, mechanism right the same concept uh, here you can consider for the the analysis of gears also right this concept is called a friction wheel concept right so if this speed of rotation of this uh, uh, friction wheels is higher then there is a chance of slippage even the surfaces are rough in nature at higher speeds you cannot maintain this frictional characteristics which causes the uh, rotation of the tire driven member so that means at higher speeds even the surfaces are rough in nature there is chance of slippage so that's why to avoid this slippage these cylindrical surfaces are provided with some teeth like structures and these teeth of both the cylinders are meshed with each other so that the the progressive engagement of uh, teeth of both the gear wheels uh, both the uh, cylindrical wheels takes place right so obviously the progressive engagement and the progressive rotation of both the uh, uh, friction wheels uh, takes place right so the cylindrical wheel the number of teeth is or projection on the surface of it is called a gear wheel right so that means both the gear wheels are provided with the number of teeth on its surface and the teeth of gear engaged with the teeth of another gear then when one gear rotates this teeth causes force on the teeth of another gear then obviously both are in uh, relative motion in the opposite direction when the teeth are having external contact now here the same way you can analyze the uh, gear here the drive between two gears is represented by a plane cylinders having diameters equal to the circles so generally the gears are uh, specified are represented with uh, pitch circles of it right pitch circles we'll see what i mean by pitch circle later on so timing is just remember an imaginary circle imaginary circle which represents the size of the gear where the contact between the two gear wheels takes place is called the pitch circle generally the, the gear wheels are represented with pitch circles of uh, two uh, gear wheels and these two pitch circles are in contact with each other right so the point where the two pitch circles are in contact it is called a pitch point right let us take uh, the gear one uh is having pitch circle radius of r1 consists of z1 teeth rotates with an angular velocity of omega 1 in anti clockwise direction which is engaged with a pinion right generally the smaller one will be considered as the pinion right and the larger one will be considered as the gear so which drives the gear, uh, pinion in opposite sense with an angular velocity of omega 2 right so gear is a toothed wheel that engages another toothed mechanism to change the speed or the direction of transmitted motion so that's how the gear is uh, defined or the gear is derived from the concept of friction wheels a gear is simply a toothed frictional wheel that engages with a another toothed mechanism right the basic function of this uh, is to change the speed and the direction of motion 
right? So, uh, the, in another fashion, the gate can be defined as uh, the mechanical element used for transmitting power and rotary motion from one shaft to another shaft by means of progressive engagement of positions called teeth. So, the gear is a mechanical element which is used to transmit power and rotary motion from one shaft to another shaft by means of progressive engagement of projections, right? And these projections are called teeth, right? The shaft from which the power is transmitted is called the driving shaft and the shaft to which the power is uh, uh, transferred is called driven shaft, right? And the corresponding gear wheels on the driving and driven shafts are called driving gear and driven gear, right? So generally, in the pair of gear wheels, so the smaller one is called the pinion and the larger of the pair is called the gear, right? So this pair of gear wheels generally represented uh, graphically with the two circles called pitch circles. Pitch circle is an imaginary circle. Imaginary circle which represents the size of the gear, right? So when the two gear wheels are in meshing or when the two gear wheels are in mating, the two pitch circles of gears, gear wheels in engagement touches with each other at the point called pitch point, right? So, now if you consider the advantages of gear drives, uh, the first advantage is it is very compact when you compare it with other type of power transmission drives like a belt and chain drives, no doubt about it. And it gives uh, positive drive as uh, the gear wheels are provided with uh, two good structures. Uh, so the progress engagement of these teeth will not allow any slippage. Obviously, it gives exact velocity ratio or constant velocity ratio. The drive which gives constant velocity ratio is called positive drive. Obviously, your gear drive is also a positive drive. Right? So it allows a speed reduction ratio from 6 is to 1 to maximum of uh, uh, 4,900 is to 1 maximum speed ratio which may not be possible by other power transmission drives, right? So, when you compare with other uh, power transmission drives like the bell drives, it exhibits higher speed ratio, right? So, these uh, gear drives are used for the power transmission for uh, different uh, uh, orientations of the shafts. Uh, I mean, uh, when the shafts are parallel, when the shafts are intersecting, when the shafts are uh, uh, lying on different planes, so when the shafts are non focal and all, but then also you can go for uh, gear drives, right? So these uh, gear drives generally meant for higher power transmission, higher speed reductions, right? So that is the uh, most advantage of uh, gear drives uh, compared with other types of uh, uh, gear drives, you know, other types of uh, power transmission drives. Okay, so these are all uh, uh, the advantages of gear drives compared with other types of power transmission drives, right? In spite of all these advantages, it finds a few limitations in its power transmission when it comes to gear drives, right? It requires continuous lubrication. So, we'll see one by one. So, the gear drives are a little bit costlier when it comes to the economics of these mechanical elements a little bit uh, costlier uh, compared with the uh, belt and chain drives or road drives hidden. So uh, the cost is also one of the important uh, factor uh, while designing the uh, products. So that's why you need to consider this factor also into the consideration when you select uh, the power transmission drive for the given application, right? So the gear drive, as I said earlier, it is uh, suitable for the shafts which are very much closer to each other. You cannot uh, transmit power from one shaft to another shaft which are located at further distances by using gear drives, right? So instead, you can go for uh, bell drives, right? So that is another uh, uh, limitation of uh, gear drive, right? So another most important uh, uh, the limitation or uh, disadvantage, uh, you can call it, uh, the shaft alignment must be 
uh, 100%. If there are any misalignments, either linear misalignment or angular misalignment of uh, shafts between which the power is transmitted takes place, uh, obviously you cannot make the gates in perfection. Right? If the rating is not uh, perfect, obviously the velocity ratio or power transmission may not be up to the mark. Obviously, the efficiency will be reduced in its uh, functioning. Right? So, this is also one of the, another limitation. And the most important uh, factor you need to consider the lubrication must be continuous because uh, most of the industrial applications, uh, the gates are metallic gates, gates used on the metallic gates. Right? So here the power transmission takes place by means of uh, made of the teeth of two gear wheels. Right? That means here you have metal to metal contact between uh, the teeth of gear wheels. Right? So obviously the friction between these uh, metallic uh, elements will be higher. Right? This friction causes the heat generation and this friction causes the uh, deformation, right? Where it is uh, physical deformation or thermal deformation. When this uh, deformation takes place, obviously, uh, you will uh, get uh, the seepage or the interference or the uh, undercuts, a teeth profile. The teeth profiles are changed. When the deformation is uh, uh, common, obviously, the profiles of teeth change, right? When the profiles are changed, obviously, you cannot expect that. Uh, Good power transmission. That's why the continuous lubrication of uh, gear wheels are required uh, to get the effective power transmission. That's why the gear wheels are uh, frequently lubricated with uh, uh, grease, uh, like our uh, grease-like uh, lubricating materials. Right? If the lubrication is not proper, you cannot expect a good uh, power transmission, effective power transmission from the uh, gear drives. That is another limitation. Of Get right. Then, when it comes to the functions of uh, gear drives, we already discussed while discussing the definition of uh, gear drive. Uh, now we will see the functions of uh, gear drives. The first one is to increase or decrease the speed of rotation. The gear drive is used for the power transmission. The power is transmitted only by force or torque transmission. Right? So, and this force or torque transmission takes place by motion transmission. Right? So, that means the speed of the driving shaft is given to the driven shaft, either by amplification or by reduction. So, that means it can be used for speed reduction or speed decrease. Right? So, and next one is to change the amount of force or torque. Similarly, to change the direction of rotation or to reverse the direction of rotation and to give the motion to different axes like a parallel uh, axis, right angled axis or linear axis, right? These are all the functions of gears, right? So then, gear manufacturing standards. As I said earlier, these are the important uh, mechanical elements in the power transmission, right? So to standardize the uh, the manufacturing practices of these uh, important power transmission drives uh, throughout the globe. Uh, certain standards have been uh, developed and these are American Gear Manufacturers Association, AGMA standards. Similarly, American National Standards Institution, ANSI standards. Uh, the case of the manufacturer according to these standards uh, so that uh, these uh, products can be validated throughout the globe. Okay. Right? I hope it is clear. Thank you. Thank you very much.